I came into the jail in 2009 as a volunteer. I did the daytime tours and then we kind of thought about it and it's an awesome place for a ghost hunt and I was already a ghost hunter at the time so we started the paranormal hunts at night to make money for the jail as a fundraiser. Uh, it was built in 1882. Uh, the sheriff's house is in the front and by law in Indiana the sheriff's house had to be adjacent to the jail. So what you see when you drive up is the front of the house and the jail is in the back of the building. The sheriff and his family were required to live in the house during their term. Terms were usually four years for a sheriff. And then the inmates would be brought in the back section into the booking room, get processed in, and then brought to whatever cell block they were being taken to. The house itself is 1882. The original jail that was built was taken down and there was an addition added onto it in 1909. And then there was a further addition onto the jail in 1928. So in total, there's 144 cells here. Well, the claim to fame is John Dillinger. He was brought here in 1934, and uh, he was here about three months before he made his famous escape from the jail. Dillinger was an opportunist. Dillinger was a very clever man. He was also very charismatic. People liked Dillinger. He made friends easily. Um, he was in his cell block when one of the maintenance men came in to do some cleaning for the day. Dillinger convinced that man that he had a gun and he sent this man to collect other people that was working in jail that day and he locked them up in a cell and then he was able to pretty much walk out. He went out the kitchen door and he went to steal one of the deputies cars but he didn't have the keys for that. So after thinking it through he took a hostage and went next door to the town garage where the mechanic offered him Sheriff Holly's brand new V8. He drove out of town in the sheriff's car. Uh, there was another inmate that was here, and his name was James Fur Sammons, and he was Al Capone's right-hand man. He spent some time here with us also. Well, the last family that lived in the house is 1953. The jail stayed open until 1974, and that was when the last of the prisoners were taken out of the jail and moved to the new jail that they built at the other end of town. Uh, the building was bought by a private individual, uh, he bought several buildings on this block, and the one that he wanted, he made a speakeasy out of it. It was the boiler house for the jail. And he kind of left the jail to sit here and be neglected for a while. In 1987, the Sheriff's House Foundation bought the building and started the restoration process. And because of the time that it was left abandoned, there was a lot of work to do. And they started with the Sheriff's residence, and they went through the restoration and restored everything back to original as when the families lived here and now they're starting in on the jail and restoring that. I think most people see old abandoned buildings and assume they're haunted and um, it's just a mindset that a lot of people have and coming in here and doing tours and already being a ghost hunter sometimes you're just more aware of your surrounding and the atmosphere in the jail itself kind of gives you that feeling so when we started coming in here with equipment that we could measure activity with, we found that there was quite a lot of activity going on in the jail. As far as just coming in here and walking around, you do get the feel somebody's watching you. You do get different sounds that you can't quite figure out where they're coming from, uh, but you know they're within the jail. We do use K2 meters, which measure electromagnetic fields, and you will get hits on your K2 meters. You are able to do question and answer using the K2 meter that seems to make an intelligent sense. We have people that do video and pictures. Evidence has been found on both. There have been a full full body apparitions caught. People have caught on pictures. Uh, people do a lot of voice recordings here. There are a lot of EVPs that come from this jail. EVPs are electro voice phenomenon uh, and we, we were surprised to find that a lot of the EVPs were female. There was a female section here in the jail um, so we were surprised though that most of them tend to be female. The clearest one that I've ever heard come from the jail, uh, one of the teams caught it up in the juvenile section. We were leaving that section and none of us heard it with our ears but later when we listened to the recording what we heard was a woman yelling and she said, wait, stop boys, he's bleeding. 
and it was very clear and it was female and I was the only female on that team that day. The that I think we talked to quite a bit is James Fur Sammons and he was the one that I, I talked about being Al Capone's hitman because it seems like if we talk about him, the activity increases. It was a real working jail. So during the time it was open, there were homicides, suicides, there were hunger strikes, there were you know hangings within the cells. It was a real working jail, just like you would see now. The jail is a traumatic place for a lot of people, not just because of the confinement either. When a person is in jail, you have to deal with you know other inmates and restrictions and all these kinds of things. Plus, you have to deal with your own remorse on what you may have done to be in here. And a lot of times, that is a lot of weight to carry. And I think people that, you know, pass over, they don't always make peace with that. And I think sometimes that's why they stay.